Bruce Banner wakes up in the middle of a crater. This was certainly not the first time he woke up disoriented, not remembering what had happened, and not knowing where he was, but this time, everything was completely different. Something's wrong. The Hulk is gone. It's night, and night is his time, but I can't feel him. He's always there, at the edges, under the skin, but he's not there. Bruce heard a voice calling out to him and turned around, surprised to see Spider-Man emerging from under the crushed green truck. What are you doing here? He asked Spider-Man, but Spider-Man, just like Bruce, didn't understand how he ended up there or what had hit them so hard. Suddenly, his spider sense kicked in. Whatever hit us, I think it's still here, like it's everywhere closing in. No, it's not closing in. It's in me. It's in me. <sighs> Spider-Man, I know you're scared, Bruce says. Scared, not scared, angry. Bruce realizes that things are bad and that he can't handle it on his own. It's Banner, I need help. The Fantastic Four, whom Hulk had called, appeared. Enraged, he lunged at them. Spider-Man and the Thing exchanged powerful blows. The Fantastic Four managed to restrain Spider-Man together, and the Thing delivered a blow that knocked Spider-Man off his feet. Sorry, Pete. The Thing said. We have to get him out of here. We can contain him, Bruce. No, Reed. Don't lock him up. We don't want to do that to him. Trust me. After an hour, they were already at the former military research facility near the New York coastline. Peter came to his senses. Did I hurt anyone? You punched Ben a lot, but he can take it, he heard in response. Sorry. Oh no! Did I keep my... Peter didn't have time to finish. Yes, it's okay, you kept your pants on, Bruce said jokingly. My mask! Did I keep my mask on? Oh, that. Yes, don't worry. Your secret's safe, whoever you are. We'll head back to New York, check cameras in the area of the transference, look for answers. Reed said. The Thing insisted that he should stay with Spider-Man since he could stand up to Hulk if needed, unlike Bruce. But Bruce explained to him, You beat him up. His Hulk will remember that. Trust me, go, we'll be okay. Spider-Man and Bruce were left alone, sitting by the fire as the sun began to set. I don't want to turn into that again. I don't want to just stop being again, Peter said. I know. I know exactly how scared you are, Bruce replied. Peter continued, you should go now. Find somewhere to hide. You could get hurt. I could, but I don't think that's going to happen, Bruce answered. I can feel him. I'm fading, Peter continued fearfully. It's okay. You're not alone, Bruce replied. Thank you, were the last words Peter uttered before his eyes and body turned green once again. Morning came. Bruce? Bruce? Peter called out. It's all right. You did a healthy amount of smashing, but you never tried to hurt me, Bruce replied. The Fantastic Four appeared. Reed showed a video they managed to obtain from surveillance cameras. Loki? Bruce exclaimed, continuing to watch the video. Stop, beast, Loki said. What did you call me? You've changed. You're articulate, Loki continued. I'm very articulate, and you've pissed me off a lot of times, annoying god. You're different, and I can finally sense it. The source of your power. It's just energy. I can reach it. For the good of this planet, I cast your power out. Loki exclaimed with a smirk, using magic. We need to pay Loki a visit, Bruce said. They found him in the Upper West Side, devouring a hot dog. Loki! The thing exclaimed. Fellow heroes! Loki smiled. You pushed out my gamma radiation. You drove out the Hulk! Bruce lunged at him. No need to thank me. And it lodged in me, Spider-Man shouted. I, oh, my bad, Loki said with concern. On Earth, there's this stupid rule. Magic must pay a price. To put it another way, for every magical action, there is an equal and usually particularly crappy reaction, Loki said. You put a monster inside me, Peter said. I can redo the spell, but I don't know where the Hulk will end up. And actually, no, I can't redo the spell. I can't reach it in you. You're saying magic can't do anything? Potentially, I could make it far worse. Realizing that magic wouldn't help them, they went back to the Fantastic Four's home to find a scientific solution to this problem. Sue, you and Reed are world-class scientific minds. But, no offense, should Spider-Man really be part of this brainstorming session? Oh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I have a hypothesis. My guess is the gamma energy was drawn to me due to the radioactive nature of my powers. Attracted to a sympathetic resonance, Spider-Man said. They came to the conclusion that the best way to solve this problem 
might be to direct gamma energy onto Bruce. And if they create a controlling gamma burst, then Bruce, metaphorically speaking, would transform into a diminished version of the Hulk, a gamma vampire with the ability to absorb other radiations, essentially sucking out the Hulk devil from Peter. They returned to the former military research facility, where the gamma chamber was located. Sue and Reed left the island, planning to return in the morning. You just have to trigger the explosion and then hope that our theories are right and I can absorb you. Oh, and also that I survive this, Bruce said, sitting inside the containment box. Sure, but I was just thinking. How is it better if it's you? Peter asked. What do you mean? Bruce clarified. I could keep it, Peter said. The Hulk is not your monster, not a burden for you to bear. See you if we both survive. The sun was setting at 6.57 p.m. Spider-Man pressed the button at 6.56 and the gamma explosion occurred. Hulk awakened. And at that moment, Bruce, saturated with gamma energy, emerged from the containment box and confronted Spider-Hulk. You have something that doesn't belong to you. Come get it, little Hulk. Bruce lunged at Spider-Hulk and they began to fight, delivering powerful blows to each other. During the strikes, Bruce gradually absorbed portions of Spider-Hulk's gamma energy, using all his strength to subdue the Spider-Man and slowly drain the Hulk out of him. Hulk turned towards Bruce. I think it worked. No sign of Hulk, Spider-Man said. Mine will be back soon. I can feel him, Bruce said. Peter stayed with Bruce to ensure he wasn't alone as he faded away. What are you doing, Peter? Just giving you a hug, big man. Wait, did you just call me Peter? Spider-Man was surprised that Hulk knew who he was. You made everyone forget who you are. Banner forgot, but I don't forget. Hulk told him that all this time a part of him was still within Bruce, that he didn't completely disappear. He was in darkness, screaming, but no one could hear him. Banner is my family. I'd do anything for him, but I can't be with him. I'm glad you were. You're a good man, Peter Parker. I'll try to remember that next time we meet. He said in farewell, 